Tech Spot fans, happy new month to every single one of you. I hope this April brings us the best of news, best of health, and best of every good thing that we all deserve. Welcome to Sport on My Community, the show that celebrates African and of course American greatness in Texas and by extension the entire United States of America. My name is Bayon Lee Arashi. I have so much for you guys today on the sports segment and more of soccer will be on the show today than ever before. Last weekend, of course, the Premier League and other leagues across Europe returned and there were so many great, great results across England, France, Spain and of course Germany. But you know and I know that the English Premier League is the most glamorous league across the world and has such a huge followers across the entire world, billions of followers for that league in particular in England. Of course, Wolverhampton Wanderers did a double over Manchester United on Tuesday night by beating them in the FA Cup. They knocked United out in the FA Cup and of course they also affected their chance of probably getting a Champions League spot this season in the Premier League. Ashley Young was sent off in the 57th minute of that particular game and of course Wolverhampton Wanderers came from one goal behind to beat Manchester United by two goals to one that night and that particular team Wolverhampton Wanderers I've been mentioning them on this segment if you've observed in the past few weeks I think this season will probably be their best season after their feat in the 1979-1980 uh, season in the Premier League of course last on Tuesday night they came back from two one goal down McTominay scored a brilliant goal for Manchester United of course but Wolverhampton came back and scored one and then the second one to beat Manchester United but the unfortunate news in the entire week will be the confirmed relegation of Fulham Football Club and Huddersfield Football Club Huddersfield were confirmed relegated over the weekend last weekend but Fulham confirmation came in Tuesday night after suffering a heavy defeat uh, by Watford. Watford of course Watford defeated them four goals to one on Tuesday night making it uh, a relegated season for a uh, relegation season so to say for Fulham Football Club. So Fulham and Huddersfield have been confirmed relegated from the English Premier League and they will be playing championship football next season. Of course hopefully Brighton, Southampton, Burnley and Cardiff, either of them will be joining Huddersfield and Fulham in the championship come next season. Brighton played Chelsea on Wednesday of course and Cardiff City played Manchester City on the same Wednesday night. And you will also remember that Liverpool defeated Tottenham Hotspur on Sunday by two goals to one. Tottenham really really had a chance to beat Liverpool in that game. But of course, Liverpool had that extra effort, extra strength in the final minute of that game to defeat Tottenham Hotspur. And of course, Liverpool keep chasing Manchester City for that Premier League, so, so much desired Premier League uh, trophy by Liverpool fans and of course, most of their fans across the world. And Liverpool fans, I don't know whether it's only just my thought, but I think most of their fans are elderly people that have been following that club since the 60s, 70s and 80s. I move on from here now to talk about Real Madrid. Real Madrid president Florentino Perez came out on Wednesday morning saying that the Bernabeu Stadium will become the most beautiful and the best stadium in the world after the four-year refurbishment plan is completed. That stadium will have a retractable roof that's one of the things they're going to have that's going to make it very very attractive and of course they will have a 360 degree video scoreboard in the Santiago Bernabeu. The 81,000 capacity that the stadium currently has will still remain of course but that stadium will have new look and of course will have so many new things for them. Remember their legendary coach Zinedine Zidane returned sometime in March and since that time they've not lost any game. Hopefully, we'll see what Santiago Bernabeu will be turned to. And Real Madrid have been playing at this same stadium since, guess what, 1947. They've been playing at that same stadium. And of course, they've been having so many new look for it every year. And then, now we move on to the same La Liga. We stay in, it we stay in Spain, of course. We're still going to Italy later on the show. But we still stay in Spain. 
there were games in the La Liga midweek as well last weekend and of course this midweek because you know the previous over the over, over the weekend last time there were international uh, soccer games that were played by most of the countries some played the european qualifiers we should have bring you some results on that one but you know the time i have on this show is really really very short so let us just stick with the domestic football at this time in la liga on tuesday night probably the best league match of that season of course was played uh, on Tuesday night and it was between FC Barcelona and Villarreal Football Club. The game ended four goals apiece to Villarreal and Barcelona. But Barcelona started the rampage that night, courtesy two early goals from Felipe Contijo and Malcolm scoring uh, two goals first. But of course our own Nigeria, Chukweze, came and scored a very very good goal for Villarreal and then a Kambi scored and then Ibora scored and then the legendary Colombia striker Carlos Bata scored making it 4-2 for Villarreal but guess what and guess who came on in the 90th minute one and only Lionel Messi scored a sixth free kick in six games for FC Barcelona to make it 4-3 in the 90th minute and of course in the injury time of that game 94th minute to be precise Suarez came up and scored a very good left foot finish to make it four goals apiece for FC Barcelona and Villa. A very, very interesting game. But more importantly, I'm even more excited for our own Samuel Chukweze. And of course, with his feet for Villarreal Football Club, I think he's going to be a very brilliant addition to the Nigeria Super Eagles. Super Eagles have not had such a natural uh, left footer in that squad for a very, very long time since the retirement of Emmanuel Amunike. And I think he looks just something like the great coach now who we'll we'll qualified Tanzania for their first Nations Cup since 1980. And of course, Tanzania will play in the Nations Cup later this June in the Africa Cup of Nations. Finally, on the show today, this one is really, really a very sad one. It makes me really, really sad. But I'm going to talk about it anyway. 19 year old. This guy was born February 28th, year 2000. He's just a 19 year old young man of Ivorian descent. But of course, he was born in Italy. And of course, guess who his mentor was? Our own Obafemi Matis. Who am I talking about? Juventus striker Moise King was subject to a very disgraceful and of course very disgraceful racial abuse on Tuesday night away at Kagari in the Syria R. The young striker scored the second goal for his court for his team to give them a 2 0 win against Kagari in the Syria R team. And of course as young as he was he went to the in front of the Kagari fans, spread his arms, celebrating his goal, happy for his goal and he was subject to a disgraceful, very, very disgraceful, I say without missing any word, racial abuse by these same Calgary fans. Calgary fans have been doing this from time to time. They did it to Samuel Little Fields, they did it to a couple of other African players. Blaise Matuidi suffered the same racial abuse from these same Calgary fans, and I guess the Italian FA will maybe, hopefully, do something about it this time around. But the unfortunate part of this entire uh, entire episode was a comment by one of the leaders of that team, Leonardo Bonucci. He reacted Wednesday morning by saying, Moise King should have known better. He shouldn't have celebrated in front of the fans. And of course, the coach, Massimiliano Allegri, also came out with his own unfortunate incident, also saying, though there were no reason for the Calgary fans to racially abuse him, but also the player should have done better. I think you guys should be ashamed of yourself, both Allegri and Bonucci. You should be ashamed of yourself for actually saying that kind of comment against your own player. But it is what it is. We live in a world where you just have to do what you got to do. But from here on this show and across the entire world, there is no, no excuse for racism in the beautiful game that we all love. This is about all I have for you on the show today. And I have to go right now. My name is Bayon Lear. I shall see you guys again next week. God willing, keep enjoying the show and keep doing sports. Bye-bye now.